Well, this is very meta. I'm shooting a video of myself while I'm editing the video that you're currently watching. Last week was, you know, it was, it was kind of tough, you know, with all the investigative reporting and everything. So I figured this week I'll just do something nice and simple. I'll just do like a little um, interview and ring tour. Nothing complicated. Unfortunately, complicated seems to follow me. What was the reason why you did it? My home was stolen from me by with forged documents. See what I mean? Hi, I'm Dee, and this is my little tiny home. Um, I kind of call it my gypsy wagon, and that's kind of what it will remind you of when you see it. <laughs> We started out with a 1975 Road Ranger that I got for $280. That uh, I got it from a guy who used it for hunting, so it was pretty much trashed. It was pretty much gutted, but it reeked of beer and cigarettes. And I threw all my materials, my wood and stuff, in it. Hauled it from Oregon down to my son's in Mesa. My son helped me to build it. It's got a steel frame. He's a welder. We tried to salvage some things on it and ended up, he finally got fed up after three months. He took a saw to the original trailer and just went, <laughs> the whole thing just, what I suggest is to spend the money to get a proper frame. And I would suggest dual axles because of the um, tendency to, I have a really heavy duty hitch that does uh, levelizing and um, anti-sway. But you've got just one axle. I just the one. This is seven foot by twelve foot. Can you show me what you tow it with? Oh yeah, I have this um, suburban. I used to have a Jeep Grand Cherokee. It's four wheel drive. My Jeep was an art. It's big, so I carry passengers, which I couldn't do before. This yeah. tows eight hundred eight thousand six hundred pounds. My Jeep only towed about 5,000. The roof is really good. It's not like most RV roofs because we did it more like a house roof, which gives a whole lot more insulation. So it keeps it cooler um, in the summer and warmer in the winter. My little porch that folds down, I wanted a four foot patio and he goes, oh, well, you know, you can't even put a table and a chair on a four foot patio. I'm gonna give you a six foot patio. So that's what I got. And it folds up when I travel. And these poles I just got off of Craigslist for free. And so I have it all worked out so I can pack them up against it. So how does this work? It's on these levelers. Yeah, well this, this, these are all manual. Mm -hmm. And this just lifts up. And see, it's on hinges over here. You can see right, but it's fully manual, like there's no it's hydraulics all, full, or anything. Yeah, at this point it's fully manual. I okay. would eventually like to do, uh, I think it's just some pulleys. I don't even think I have to like make it fancy. Right. But just some pulleys might help. I can get it up myself. And once it's up there, it pretty much stays up while I strap it. I do have my own land up in Washington. I camp there mostly in the summer. And so then it's there for like three, four months at a time. And then I start traveling again. This year, I'm, I used to have a store and I gave up my store. What kind of store? It was D's Arts, Antiques, and Collectibles. And Me so, too. I had an antique store too. So you'll see when you go inside, uh, you know, people think it's like a museum in there. When I travel, I'll leave it off unless I'm going to be, because it is kind of a pain. And the first thing I tackled myself was this, which was not easy. And I know it doesn't look great, but it's all salvage. And it works. It's my, got my batteries, my tools. It's, I call it my little tool shed. Those things all go in there when I'm traveling. So, you know, and, and then of course, this is my electric. And um, it, I don't have it through the walls and stuff. It's just a cord on, a, you know, one of those uh, things that you plug stuff into. Mm -hmm. If I go to a campground or if I'm parked at somebody's house or something, I can plug in with this. I have my two solar panels up there, 200 watts. And I only have one battery now, but I will get another one. And this is from the original trailer, but quite modified. When it's down, it really looks cute. And then over here, this window I got for 10 bucks at a... Um, at a uh, Craigslist or something. I am gonna put a screen in here because in the summer here, that'll help a lot. So, well, come on in. What I can't get on camera is how nice it smells in here. Oh. <laughs> this was an antique changing stand. And so I turned that into my little kitchen galley. 
and oh, I'm learning some things. I got some really good ideas for how to make my things down here, like keep my food inside in and out easier, because mm -hmm. they're really hard to move. And then this table comes up. This is this is the antique table I was telling you about, and it's anchored in there. So I use this like I have a my little um, you know grill out there. Or the, Things. So everything's like you know, real furniture that can move around. So I can move this when it's not when, it's, when I'm traveling. I, I hook it in so it, it doesn't move. And this is the same thing. This is an old. It's an antique uh, typewriter. Right. Sure. And it, it goes up and down on both sides. So I can move it around. I can move it to here. I can you know I can move it around however I want to use it. I do have more bungees than I would like, but uh, it was a nece necessary evil because I didn't build anything. If I were to do it again, I would build some kind of built-in cupboards. If I took these things down, I used to, when I went to my land, I'd take it all down, and, but then it would take me two to three days to get ready to go. Now I just leave everything strapped in. You know, there's a few things I undo, but it only takes me an hour to get ready to hit the road. Mm -hmm. I, I, when I'm traveling, I take, this one I, I tied on permanently to see how well that worked. And I might end up doing that, but um, because it's kind of a pain, but I take them down and set them on the bed when I'm traveling. And then, you know, they're out of my way and they don't fall. And then when I stop for the night, I just put them up. And so, and then I have all of these, you know, food in there. It looks a little sloppy and messy. Anything that's lived in, that's all. Anything that's loose has a place that it goes. I'm suspicious when things are too neat. <laughs> I have ADHD, so, you know, out of sight, out of mind. A lot of people don't like so much stuff, you know, that's, um, and these lights are great because they have the, the USB things here, mm -hmm. so you can charge them, and they give off, like I have this one, gives off so much light. Mm -hmm. Like if I want to sit and work, it gives off a lot of light. Mm -hmm. And this flooring is beginning, you know, I wanted to do really good flooring, and this is that laminate. Mm -hmm. This is going on the third year. Mm -hmm. And this flooring is pretty much shot. Tell me about this painted piece down here. Okay, now this is actually my toilet. <laughs> this is oh, my wow. toilet. Inside, well, here, I'll show you the whole. Um, it's, it's, um, it's really easy to use because normally this is the only thing on it, and it's really easy to un undo it. You move this over to the bed, and then you pull this out. And I kind of made my own logo. Like, I didn't want to pay 20 bucks or whatever they charge for it. I have this on it. That's probably the prettiest toilet I've seen. <laughs> and then I got luxury there. And I, I made my own combination of buckets in there that I use. It's definitely nice to have. And, and what about the top. this cabinet here? That, I actually got that a long time ago. Um, I think I got it from Pure on the boards, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but I keep food in there, so it's got nice, it's got nice shelves in there. This is a necessity for out here. It's a fly swatter, electric, mm. battery-operated fly zapper. Because I keep my food in there mostly. Nice. I have all the Christmas, the LED Christmas lights. Mm -hmm. And so when I plug into electricity, that's, those are all lit. Mm -hmm. And then I don't have to use these guys. Mm -hmm. which, and I do photography. That's one of the ones I have over there. And I love, I love my blue glass where... I mean, that's crazy to travel, but it stays there. But I do really like having my my artistic stuff. I, I'd like to maybe clear this off. I'm trying to get to where I have less stuff in here. Mm -hmm. But I gotta have my flowers and you know, my little decorative yep. things and my cows. I'm with and, you. <laughs> I gotta have my artistic stuff on my yeah. This is This is something I was just gonna work on, so it's normal not sitting here. It's, it's you know, like a normal. little nest in here. So, so you can see the beauty of that wood. I did this completely myself, and it was a challenge. It was, I mean, I know all my mistakes, and trust mm -hmm. me, I would do it very differently if I were gonna do it again, but, mm -hmm. but it is really, really something special. I love it. Now this uh, is my little butane stove, which I discovered last year at the RTR. This is so easy to use. And here, I found on Amazon, I can get these, buy them, um, I think a dozen at a time, and it comes down to like $2.22. My next big purchase is gonna be the true refrigerator, freezer, 12 volt. Mm -hmm. And then and then I collect rocks. My son is actually, it's a 3,500 pound axle, but he's still worried that I need um, something better. He says, you pick up so many damn rocks, you know. So it so. sounds like your son is really supportive. Oh yeah, my daughter's not so much so. 
you know, she'll at least say, oh, that's interesting, but, you know, but my son's supportive. Yeah. And, I mean, I don't have a choice, you know, I don't have money to live any other way. How long have you been doing this? Well, I lived in my Jeep for two years, and then it, I'm going on to the third year in this. What was the reason why you did it? My home was stolen from me by, with forged documents and uh, by some multi-billionaire, I know who he is, a guy named down in Texas, multi-billionaire down in Texas. So I've heard, th I've heard about this this um, deep theft and all that, but uh, some people say, oh, that doesn't really happen. It does happen. He targeted older women. There was a whole group of us that were targeted. And I used to help everybody and I got burned out and I ended up getting deathly ill. And um, I, yeah, it's just been, I'm still struggling with um, how sick I got um, because of the stress. And if I'd had an attorney, they never would have gotten away with it, but I didn't have money for an attorney. They like forged that. the documents. They forged documents, made it look like they had my mortgage, which they did not have. And there was so much, it's so obvious. And the law is very specific about what they have to prove. And the courts just let it slide by. They didn't have, they, the, the laws were on my side, the evidence was on my side, the courts just assumed things instead of looking at the evidence. I lost everything and um, I, I'm still traumatized by it. I'm, I'm going to still try to do something, but I have very little hope anymore that anybody's going to do the right thing. I'm dependent on my kids now, and it shouldn't be that way. In a way, this was such a godsend because finding these videos and learning about this and that people choose this way of life helped me. Even though I didn't technically choose it, now I'm feeling like, you know, I'm content that I have something. I'm very grateful for my little home. And even if I end up finally getting restitution for my property, I will not go back to that kind of living. I will use that money to buy land where other people would think to tiny home communities. There's not enough places for people with tiny homes to be that's safe and more permanent where you're not having to move every two weeks, you know? Mm -hmm. And I feel that that's a real need and big necessity in our society. These are alternatives and I see the tiny home movement and the uh, nomad movement as a way to survive and be able to live with some sense of dignity. I didn't do it by choice, um, but now that I am doing it, I love my little home. I'm very happy that my son helped me to build it. Anyway. I just want to be clear that I didn't bleep out the guy's name because I'm like afraid of getting sued or something. It's just, I mean, I haven't even Googled this, you know? I don't want to be pointing fingers on my channel until I do. Not that I'm saying I'm going to do it. I'm not promising anything. a nice person she seems like a credible person you know if, if this happened I mean if this guy did this then somebody should be talking about it I'm not saying it's gonna be me I'm just saying it's not gonna hurt to just look and see what I can find I get here? When did this become like the Nancy Drew channel? I remember I used to have so much fun just like installing a sink with you guys. Remember that? I'm gonna go watch that again. Come with me. Remember like commenting makes your hair shiny. We had a lot of fun. The good old days.